Welcome to the PNPJS version 2.0 introduction video for new and upgraded solutions. In this video, we're going to begin by looking at some updated documentation for PNPJS version 2. We're also going to see some samples that are available that will help identify how we can use the new features available to us in V2. We'll then look at the installation procedures needed for new and upgraded solutions where we might already be using PNPJS. We'll also take a look at some new features such as selective imports, presets, and invocables. Let's begin by taking a look at the updated documentation and samples for version 2. As we can see, the primary documentation is based on version 2. Now, first of all, we can definitely still access version 1 if we need to. It's available here at the top. But much like we were used to in version 1, we can always access the getting started. And this will tell us exactly how to get started with version 2, how the installation has changed, and what we need to do to install it. We can also explore the Library Concepts tab. This will show us some of the new features that are available within PNPJS version 2, such as invokes, selective imports, and custom bundling. Now, while we're going to be creating additional videos that cover many of these topics, it's highly recommended that you review the documentation if you're looking to take advantage of the new V2 features. Additionally, the documentation will continue to receive updates as required. So it's always best to check the documentation first for any new changes or features. There are also samples that are available to us for some of these new features, such as custom bundling. Now you can access that through GitHub. So if you're in the documentation, you can just right click and open that up in a new tab, which we'll do here. It takes us to the Virtu branch, as we can see here. And now we can access the variety of features that are available to us. What we're going to briefly take a look at is our samples. If we click on samples, we can see they're available here. Uh, we see there are samples for presets, custom bundling webpack, and custom bundle rollup. Now it's important to note that these are samples on how to use some of these new features in PMPJS. This is not where you would want to put any samples you've created that utilize PMPJS. Those will still go into these SPFX repositories for web parts and extensions. Now let's take a look at a demo of installing PNPJS version 2 into a new solution and utilizing some of the features such as selective imports. We also wanted to mention that in these demos, we're just going to provide an overview of these features because this is an introductory video, but we will have additional videos that will dive deeper into these features. Let's begin by setting the context for this demo. I've created an out of the box SharePoint web part where we're going to install PNPJS version 2 and use it to connect to our website and request a list of our lists. First thing we want to do is install PNPJS version 2. We can do this by simply making a request to the SP and the graph packages. Those are the only two requests we need to make, which is different from version 1. Of course, we want to include the request to save it with dash dash save. Now that we've installed our PNPJS version 2, we can begin making the import statements to our solution. If we had used PNPJS prior to version 2, we know the only import statement we needed to make to connect to SharePoint lists or libraries was directly to the SP package. So let's go ahead and insert that import statement that we're used to seeing. Everything looks to be working right so far. So let's test that out and see if it works. We typically would type sp.web, but immediately we see something's wrong. It's throwing an error because in version two, we now are able to utilize selective imports. Essentially, selective imports allow us to select the parts of PNPJS we would like to import as opposed to the entire package as how it worked in version one. This is greatly going to benefit us from a performance perspective because now we only need to bundle in our solution the pieces we're actually using from the PNPJS library as opposed to the entire library. Now, because we know in this demo, we would like to connect to our SharePoint site and retrieve a list of all of our SharePoint lists, we're gonna to need to include a few more import statements. So I'll go ahead and paste those in now. And we can see our error has now gone away on our web object. And we can see that our lists is now available as well. The next step is to include some functionality that allows us to use PNPJS to connect to our SharePoint site and retrieve a collection of the SharePoint lists. I've got that small functionality ready to paste into our solution. Now let's briefly review what this new function does. It's a very simple sample that connects to our SharePoint site and captures a collection of lists in the same way we were used to doing it with PNPJS version one. 
We're simply cycling through our array of lists, and then we're updating an element with this list collection name. It's just simply listed right up there. Now, for purposes of illustration regarding the selective imports feature, let's remove one of those selective imports and see what happens. If I scroll up and keep our connection in view and remove our lists selective import, we see that our lists now is erroring. Alternatively, if I return our import statement for lists and remove the web, we'll see that it errors in our connection at the web level. So let's return our import statement and take notice that while we're connecting to lists, both selective import statements are required for it to work. Now let's also take a moment to look at another new feature for version two, invocables. Prior to version two, when we wanted to make a request to SharePoint for something like a list data or list items, we would always finish our connection using the get method. Now with version two, we can invoke the object directly to execute the default action for that class. In this case, making a connection to request the lists. So let's make that change. We can now update our code to execute this function and we're ready to build. Let's begin by clearing our command prompt. We'll go ahead and execute our gulp serve. And now it's packaged, we'll jump over to the browser and take a look. So here we are in a SharePoint site. I've created an out of the box site called pnpjsv2. And we're in the workbench. We'll go ahead and look to add our web part, which I've called pnpjsv2. It's loaded and we see it successfully loading the lists within our site collection. Now let's take a look at another demo where we will take an existing solution that is using version one of PNPJS and upgrade it to utilize version two. Now in this demo, we're also going to take a look at a new feature called presets. You can find presets in the documentation under the transition guide and the presets section. We're going to dive deeper into presets in another video, but in short, it allows us to group an entire set of selective imports into a single import statement. Because of the selective import feature that we saw in the first demo, presets play a very important part in successfully upgrading your version one PNPJS solutions to version two. Let's jump to the demo, take a look. Now in this demo, we've got a SharePoint web part that's been set up exactly like we saw in our previous demo. It's using PNPJS to connect to our SharePoint site and retrieve a collection of list names. The difference is that it is currently using PNPJS version one. Naturally, the first step would be to get our PNPJS packages updated to 2.0. And because when we install PNPJS version one, we explicitly install OData, logging, and common, but we do not have to explicitly install them with version 2.0, the recommendation is to uninstall PNPJS and then reinstall 2.0 specifically. Now, while this should be successful for most cases, if you have any trouble, don't hesitate to open an issue log in GitHub. Now let's go ahead and uninstall version one of PNPJS. We'll use the typical NPM uninstall and we'll explicitly identify logging, common, OData, SP, and graph. Now that version one has been uninstalled, we can do an NPM install for SP and graph, which will automatically install version two. All right. We can now see that version two of SP and graph for PNPJS has been successfully installed. Now, while the installation was completely successful, if we look over at our code, we can see we're now getting an error on the web object. This is of course, because as we learned in our first demo, simply importing only SP from PNPJS does not include everything we need to make a connection to the lists. Now at this point, because we know exactly what selective imports we need, having already done it in our first demo, we could just simply include those import statements. Although you may be working in a larger project where you don't know exactly which selective imports you need, this is where presets come in handy. Presets allow you to predefine a collection of imports that you would like to include. And what's fantastic is PNPJS 2.0 comes preloaded with a preset called all. This preset will replicate what the experience was like in version 1.0, making it very easy for us to transition from version one to version two. And while it is highly recommended to use selective imports to take advantage of tree shaking and performance gains, using the presets all will allow us to quickly accelerate to using version 2.0 and then add the selective imports at a later time. 
We can take advantage of this preset by simply replacing the import statement. Instead of just referencing at pnpsp, we'll reference at pnpsp slash presets slash all. So let's go ahead and make that replacement. Save. And now we see that the error has been removed from our web object. And while it is highly recommended to use selective imports to take advantage of tree shaking and performance gains, using the presets all will allow us to quickly accelerate to using version 2.0 and then add the selective imports at a later time. In our first demo, you might also remember that we introduced invocable objects. So the get method is no longer required, but it has not been removed. The get method has been left in place so that solutions would not be broken upon transitioning from version 1 to version 2 of PNPJS. This will allow larger projects to slowly adopt the newer features of PNPJS 2.0 as time allows. Because we're using it in a simple usage scenario for this demo, we can go ahead and make the change now. We simply just need to remove the .git. We've now successfully updated this simple demo project to use PNPJS version 2. We've showed how to uninstall version 1, reinstall version 2, how to utilize presets, and update our code to take advantage of invocable objects. Now all that's left is to gulp serve and confirm everything is working. So let's go ahead and execute our gulp serve. Now that we've successfully ran our gulp serve, let's take a look at our workbench. We're in our hosted workbench, so we'll go ahead and look to add our web part. It's going to be called PNPJS version 1 because it was originally built on version 1. We now see it successfully loading using version 2. Thanks for watching and be sure to check out our other PNPJS V2 videos.